What's up and welcome to our youth service. We are so glad that you're joining with us from wherever you are watching this. We are so glad that we can gather together virtually and we can be a part of what God has for us. Now you're gonna see a message in a few minutes and then after that, there's some discussion questions that you can either talk with, talk about with the people around you or you can just journal about yourself. We're really excited about what God is gonna do through this message in you. Thanks a lot for joining us. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Griffin. If you do not know, I am our Walnut Creek youth pastor. We are continuing in a series here called The Masks We Wear. For some reason, I feel the need to add like four different S's on the end of that word, mask, but you know, we're just gonna keep rolling with it because it feels right. But we're talking about the mask that we wear in our daily lives. And that can be from social media to, to numerous other areas of our, of our lives. And, and sometimes we try to hide the parts of ourselves that we're afraid to show to other people or to show to God. And what God wants to help you do is he wants you to live a true, authentic life. And, and I wanna talk to you today about what it looks like to do that through the lens, through the world of social media. How to remove the mask of social media and live in reality. And I think the danger of social media is, is pretty obvious, right? The danger is this. We can fall into the trap of painting a picture of a life that we're living that is not close to reality. That we could post a picture, post a video, and do whatever it is, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, if you're even using Facebook but we could present ourselves in a certain light so that other people could see us and go, wow, they're amazing, look at them, but really, inwardly, be struggling, inwardly being insecure. And we battle and wrestle between our projected self and our actual self, our real self. And God wants you to encounter your real self because you cannot encounter God without seeing yourself for who you really are. Because when you're close to God, he exposes you, he loves you, he shows you every single part of who you are. And so I wanna help you today, kinda see the dangers of wearing this mask of social media. And it's such an easy trap to fall into because the ecosystem itself of, of just social networking and and, and, and relating to one another on social media is, is so just easy to be like, okay, I'm spending 10 minutes on Instagram, and next thing you know, it's an hour or two hours later, and, and you get caught up in this, this cycle of watching other people's lives go by and comparing their life to yours, and you just end up feeling miserable. And uh, I wanna help you today navigate through a world that is so centered on social media. So let's pray together really quickly and just ask God to speak in this message. Jesus, so just pray that uh, wherever we're at, God, whether we feel like we're not good enough because we compare our lives to other people or um, we try to post to prove something to others, God, that you love us, you care about what we're doing and who we are. And I just pray for anyone that's listening, wherever they're at, God, that you would meet them and their place. We love you so much, Jesus. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. And so we, we see this new commodity with social media. And the new commodity is different than the old one. The old commodity used to be not just material things, but money. In fact, they, they actually had done a survey where they asked uh, several people, would you rather have a million followers or a million dollars? And the majority of people, get this, the majority of people said, I would rather have a million followers than a million dollars. And so what do we see? We see our value of the things that we care about and the things we desire change. The new commodity is attention. The new commodity is how can I prove myself to other people so I could either be famous or, or have other people cheer me on for something that I'm doing that's awesome. And it has a couple traps. This commodity, this mask that we wear in the world of social media. And the first one is this. This is the first danger of wearing the mask of social media and not being who you really are. It's 
being more concerned about what other people think than what God thinks. Galatians 1 verse 10 says this. I love this. He says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. I just felt like telling somebody today that no man, no person, no thing can deny what God has approved. That you have nothing to to approve out to the public, that you don't need to try and strive to please other people when you've been approved by God. And when you live in this rhythm, when you live in this way, it gives you a different kind of confidence in how you represent yourself to other people on social media. You post something and you're not posting something to prove something because you already know you've been approved by God. And whether I get a thousand likes or one like, it does not matter because I know that I can rest assured that my security cannot be stolen by anyone. And so if you believe that and you're a follower of Jesus, you can take a deep breath. You don't have to worry as much as you have. You, you don't have to wonder whether or not people are going to like what you post. You don't have to wonder if that selfie that you posted is going to get a lot of likes or if people are going to slide up in your DMs or whatever. It, you don't have to worry. The, the weight is off your shoulders. And your, your value and your worth is not connected to the responses that you get on social media. Your value is stored secured as a child of God in the family of God. No one can steal that from you. And so what do we do? We, we, we shift from being con- less concerned about what other people think and more concerned about what God thinks. When I'm more concerned about pleasing God, when I'm more concerned about wh- what does God think about what I'm posting or what does God think about what I'm doing, the decisions that I'm making or the things that I'm thinking, it changes my approach. And so I would just ask you to to maybe even just reconsider today, whether you're scrolling on social media or whatever it is, engaging with other people online, that that you would reconsider, am I doing this to please others or am I doing this to please God? Because I have nothing to prove. So the first danger is getting caught up and being more concerned about what other people think than what God thinks of you. And the second Danger is this, and this is so important. I want you to hear me on this. Hiding and and, and covering yourself up with a mask, it's going to hurt you in the long run. I think it's so easy to get prone to this, this, this life of watching other people live their best life online, right? I mean, people, people aren't just drinking Fiji water. They're up in Fiji jumping into water and it's a cinematic video and there's like majestic sounds and it's like, is this a movie? Is this like a short film as I'm scrolling on Instagram? And suddenly you feel so small because they're living what seems to be a big life. But what you don't know is what's happening behind the screen. What you don't know is is the fears that they have, the personal struggles that they have, that the picture that they're presenting out to you is actually not a reflection of their reality. Uh, Maybe this is just a reminder for you, but Instagram, TikTok, (laughs) YouTube, it's not real. It's not a reflection of reality. Now, it it might have a fragment or a, a semblance of reality in it, but it is not real. And so, We hide who we really are because we're afraid that if we were to be seen, then we would be exposed. And so it's just better to hide and and try to blend in and try to live somebody else's life because if I showed my life for what it really was, I would feel so small. I want to share with you uh, a passage in Genesis 3. And this is uh, a beautiful representation of the human condition. It doesn't take long for humanity to show its true colors. It actually only took a few chapters to see that we have a hard time following God's instructions. (laughs) And and we see this in Genesis chapter 3 with Adam and Eve that you may have heard the story before that 
God, in order to uh, protect them and, and maintain relationship with them, had given them really one rule. Long story short, they broke the rule, and, and because of that, it opened their eyes to the world of sin, and they hid from God. And it picks up in the story in verse 8, chapter 3. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9, But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. Get this. He said, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And the man said, The woman you put here with me, (laughs) she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. I love how even from the beginning of time, we've been placing the blame on other people for our own problems. But we see in this story what shamed us to humans. <laughs> we see what, what confronting our fears or confronting our guilt or shame or sin does. And, and the knee-jerk reaction is this. I need to cover this up and I need to hide. I need to run away and and hopefully no one sees. Hopefully I can make this look good enough because if someone saw this, this would not be good for me. We see this so clearly. As soon as Adam and Eve, their eyes were opened to, to their vulnerability and their shame, they tried to cover themselves on their own and they tried to hide from God. You can't hide from God. It's like a, a, a little kid hiding under their bed from their parent, and they're like, hey, where are you? Where are you? And they know exactly where you're at. God sees you, and you're hiding. God sees you in the show that you're trying to create for other people so that they could be proud of you or so that they could see a certain projected version of yourself. God sees you for who you really are. But what's different than, than God's view and, and other people's view is that when God sees you, he accepts you. When God sees you, he, he, he takes you in. The Bible says that, that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, Romans 5, 8, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So in the midst of your shame, in the midst of your misery, your fear, your guilt, God meets you in that moment. He says, you don't need to cover yourself up. I got you covered. You don't need to run away. I'm pursuing you. You don't need to hide. I'm, I'm going to take your hand and I'll walk with you. You have nothing to prove. I have already approved you. No one can take that from you. And God meets you in your worst moment. God meets you in the places that you're ashamed to show other people. It's time to, to, to remove the, the mask of, of, of not just social media, but, but the, the, the projection that you put for other people to see so that they could somehow see value in you. Your value is secure. I love this later on. I want to end with this thought. Several verses down later, it says this, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Such a beautiful picture of the love of God. That even from the beginning of the story, God had a plan to cover humanity in their worst moment said that the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. How how could he make a garment? How could he make a garment of skin? There had to be a sacrifice. And what many don't know is that this was the first sacrifice indicated to us in Scripture. Uh, the first sacrifice that would point to a greater sacrifice that Jesus would come and that he would come and and cover humanity, that he would actually wrap. He's saying what you've tried to cover yourself with, what you've tried to hide and, and, and make better by your own efforts, it's not enough that I can come in and cover you. I love this about God that from the very beginning of our shortcoming, he had a plan, he had a solution. And the pointing and the plan was always It was always relationship with Jesus. I remember, and I just would conclude with this story, I remember growing up, I 
Um, my mom would oftentimes tell me to clean my room and I would do the opposite. I would stuff all the clothes in the closet. <laughs> and she would come in later on that day and I'd be like, yeah, room's clean. We cool, mom? And she, <laughs> she always knew, she'd come in and she's like, wow, this looks great. And she'd open the closet and just piles of clothes would avalanche on top of her. And it just would be this moment of realization that I never really cleaned what was there. I was just covering it up. And what happens when we live with our mask is that we're trying to cover up what only God can clean. And I want you to know today that every, the worst part of who you are, God can redeem. The, the part of who you are that you're most ashamed to show, God can redeem. He could not just bring it to the light, but he can cover it and bring the best out of you. He loves you so much. Would you just bow your head with me and, and pray? God, I just pray for anyone right now who feels ashamed of who they are, that they feel like they have to keep up with a projected version of themselves. I pray, Jesus, that you would give them the courage that they need to step into an authentic, real faith, that they can actually remove their mask and step into the light. We love you so much, God. We thank you that you meet us in our worst moments. We praise you for who you are. In your name, amen.